the topic of our message is fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 14, from verse 22 to 33, we read of the account of the life of Peter, and I'm going to skip some verses there. I'm going to read straight from verse 27. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. Amen. Amen. And this particular story is a very dramatic one, and we can liken it to ourselves every day. We want to take a bold step of faith to do something, and then the enemy will begin to come like the boisterous wind to take our attention away from fixing our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen. So in the case of uh, Peter, he saw Jesus Christ walking on the water. And then Jesus Christ told them, I'm here. Because just going back a little bit from to verse 26, let's see where it's all started. It was from verse 25. And it was, a, it, it was in the fourth watch of the night when Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. So you see, Jesus Christ walking on the, on the water. Initially they knew it was the one, but eventually fear gripped them, and then the, the, the enemy began to listen spirit. I've never seen anything like that, that a man could be walking on water. I mean, the more we go to Christ and fix our lives on him, the more of him we know. There are some things up till now in your life that you don't know that Jesus Christ is capable of. But today, he will prove his capability to you in Jesus' name. Amen. This week, he will prove to you that it's more than enough. He will prove to you that that exam that you want to see, it, he is also not only the one that will give you the wisdom, he is the heart of the examiner. Amen. Whatever that situation is that is troubling you, whatever that pain that you have in your body, Jesus Christ can take care of it even by the power in his word today. Now, when he asked Peter to come and walk on, when Peter requested that if he would really allow him to come and walk, he said, and Peter answered him, said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. So Jesus Christ is able to carry you. It wasn't the water that was carrying Peter. It was the word that came out of the mouth of Jesus. That was why we read in the account of Jesus Christ in Revelation this morning that his word is powerful. It's like a treasure sword. His word is like the voice of many waters. It's so strong it can carry anything. It was it's with his word he created the entire universe. When he said, let there be light and there was light. And John revealed to us in John chapter 1 that he is the word. Everything was made by him. And without him was nothing made that was made. Amen. Amen. So is when Christ speaks his word, his word is good, is powerful, is able to do what he says. He said, come. And when Peter responded by faith and took the first step out of the, the ship into the water, his word sustained him. His word carried him. 
Because even when he spoke that word, the water was listening. The water was listening. And when that word came out of his mouth, the water knew that he must carry out the assignment that he had to do in Peter's life so that God might be glorified. So the water, either it congealed or solidified, I don't know, but the water responded and carried the weight of Peter. So when Jesus Christ releases his word to you, whatever thing he's speaking to will respond to that, to that instruction. If a sickness that is troubling you today, the word of God is for you today, be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is not my word, it is his Amen. word. Amen. He said, be healed. Amen. If you have any need, receive provision. Amen. Receive favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So that word was strong enough to, to bring to pass what Jesus Christ said to Peter. Bible said that God sent forth his word. And he healed them. And deliver them out of all their sicknesses. So the word of God is yea and amen. amen. When God speaks it, it doesn't return to him void. It goes to search out and create what God wanted that word to do. And then when it is done, the word will come back just like the Bible says in Genesis 1. When God said, let there be light. And, and the Bible says, there was light. And God said that it was very good. So God will always confirm Whatever thing he says is what to do to make sure that it is accomplished. So the word of God in your life, in your family this morning, shall be accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. But the problem is that when we, when Peter now, <laughs> he saw the wind boisterous and he was afraid. What are you seeing this morning? A songwriter says, whose report will you believe? Is it the report that comes out of the boisterous wind, out of the weather, that is just an a, a opaque, that is not real? What are you going to believe? Peter saw the wind and removed his eyes from Jesus. And as soon as he did that, he began to sink. When we take our eyes away from Jesus, we will see trouble. We will see crisis. We will see storms. We will see impossibilities. We will see failures. We will see weaknesses. We will see, you know, death. Something in the mind of Peter was captured. His mind was captured by the scenario he was looking at. But looking at the boisterous wind, the longer you look at the wind, the lower you go sinking. But when you put your eyes on Jesus, you will continue to walk in victory. You will keep, continue to walk in the supernatural. You continue to do the impossible. You continue to walk in glory. When Peter put his feet on the water and began to walk on the water, I believe that all the other apostles that were there in the in the ship were saying, "Wow, wow, wow!" Everybody was maybe clapping. I said, ah, "This Peter, he always like to prove to know. It's better for you to prove to know by fixing your eyes on Jesus than actually sinking by looking at the storm." This is the time for us to rise and walk in the supernatural. And as long as this church is fixing its eyes on Jesus, we shall see the glory of the Lord in victory. Amen. And we are seeing that already. We are seeing that already. God has tuned our hearts. God has tuned our, our changed our focus. And we are now focused on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And because our eyes are fixed on him, victory is imminent. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, God is also interested. He will, he's not going to leave you where you are sinking, like somebody else will do. He has the power to lift you up, even when you fall. God knows our limitations. He knows our abilities. He knows our inabilities. He knows our competence. He knows our incompetence. He knows everything about us. And Jesus Christ was already ready for Peter. And so as he approached him and he realized he has 
turned his eyes away and he was sinking, he stretched forth his hands. Stretched forth his hand and caught him. Maybe this morning your faith is weak. And the enemy has brought some temptations or some hard problems against you that is making your faith to shake. No, Jesus Christ is here today to catch you. Amen. You are not going to sink in the water of life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you shall not sink in the sea Amen. of trouble. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the word boisterous we shall not have power over you. Amen. His hands are astray this morning to lift you back into the ship Amen. so that you can continue your life's journey safely to your destination in him. Amen. Jesus Christ knows how much faith you have. So he told Peter, O thou of little faith, why is that doubt? Let there not be doubt in your heart, please, this morning. Believe in God. He said in John chapter 14, Believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. He is the word of God. And something dramatic happened here when they got into the ship. Everybody had been noticing what was going on and they were kind of like, wait a minute, what manner of man is this? And this morning I come to tell you what manner of man is this in your life? And then they, when the ship came and worshipped him, when they saw the magnificent display of the power of God, when Christ could command that a man walk on the sea and he walked, they saw him sinking and they saw how he caught him and then he made sure he brought him into the ship. Everybody say, wow. God is going to visit you this week with wow. Yeah. God is going to do some tremendous things in your life and you're going to say, wow. Amen. They confirm that of a truth, he is the son of God. In the book of Matthew chapter 8, we read of the account of a leper. When I was going through the scripture yesterday, a lot of things went through my mind. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper, and I say a leper, and worshipped him. Wow, a leper came and worshipped him. How they didn't know about worship. There was an unclean man that is in the highest level of sin. They are supposed not to be around Jesus whatsoever. But he came and worshipped him all the same. There is a son that will sing that there is something that makes me come into your presence, my helper. Oh, there is something that makes me come into your presence, my helper. My helper, oh, my helper. My helper, oh, my helper. It's my condition that makes me come into your presence. Ma. It doesn't matter how you are. It doesn't matter what is wrong with you. You can seek your way to his presence. Why? Well because he's going to fix it. He's going to fix you. It's only when you run away from his presence that you go down deep into hell. But that doesn't matter how you came. It doesn't matter how filthy you are. It doesn't matter how bad you are. When you can find your way to the presence of the Lord, he will fix you. Amen. If a leper could go and worship him, I say, God, say, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst place me. And Jesus put forth his hand. Oh, my goodness. How many of us pastors today can put our hands in the hospital on somebody who has COVID and has been, you know, uh, confirmed having COVID, stage four, and still lay our hands on him? But Jesus put forth his hand and touched him despite his filthiness, despite his leprosy. Despite his unacceptable uh, status in the community, Jesus Christ touched him, touched him, touched him, touched him, and saying, I will be thou clean, be thou clean. Just once he said it, and immediately the leprosy was cleansed. This morning, I don't care how you came. 
but that you come to worship the Lord. He will touch you. Amen. He will touch you. Amen. He will cleanse you Amen. and make you be acceptable in the beloved. Amen. And Jesus said unto him, See that thou tell no man, but go thy way. Should I say to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded? He taught him the word. He gave him instruction for a testimony unto them. Hallelujah. Amen. There's somebody this morning that is receiving a cleansing from the Lord. Amen. There's somebody that is receiving a cleansing from the Lord. Amen. There's somebody that is receiving acceptance from the Lord. Amen. Well, because you have a heart to worship him. Hallelujah. You're fixing your eyes not on the problem. You're fixing your eyes on the solution. Amen. And Jesus Christ is that solution. Amen. Now in verse 5, when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Now this is a centurion. A man, a soldier who was a leader of over of about 100 men in his own team. It was a centurion. Saying, Lord, thy servant lieth at home sick. So the first thing he said, Lord, Lord. How many men? Ten. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, thy servant lieth home sick. Or the twelfth tree, grievously tormented. I don't know who is at home now, wherever you are, that you are sick, whatever sickness. Hallelujah. We'll spend some time in prayer for you today. That the Lord that healed this man, he will prove himself today as we have come to worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, Lord, since you are able to put God in that in the focus of being in your life as being the, the focal point of your existence. Amen. The man, even even though it was a, uh, it, it was it was, it was uh, an important man in the military, but then he lifted the Lord. He said, "Lord, it was worship." He gave him worship. He gave him worship. He gave him worship. Jesus answered and said unto him, "I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him." The centurion answered and said, "Lord, I am not worthy." Oh God, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Amen. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this. And he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, not, no, not in Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. In verse 13, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. Amen. This morning, on behalf of Jesus, I stand because he said, Greater, what shall we do? Whatever thing is not right in your body that is plaguing you right now, by the authority of the blood of Jesus and his name, I speak to that situation in your body, in your life right now, to receive strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is God at work. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, that we read this morning, we read chapter 9, verse 18 to 25. We read of the account of, uh, hallelujah, Amen. of a sick girl. While he was speaking, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him. All these people, they came with worship, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did the disciples. And behold, a woman who was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him and tore the hem of his garment. And tore the hem of his garment. And tore the hem of his garment. There's a part of Jesus. Every part of Jesus is useful to you today. Amen. Even though you cannot touch the hem of his garment, you can touch his word. Amen. He's the word. His word. His word is alive. Amen. For he said within myself, if I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. But Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. And right there and then, the trouble of 12 years was taken away in a moment just because she fixed her eyes on her Jesus. Take your eyes.
eyes away from your problem this morning and fix your eyes on Jesus? The answer is right there. Jesus. 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 He will fix it. Hallelujah. In the book of uh, Mark, Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, we read of the account of Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was an international beggar who was begging on the highway. But one day he heard that Jesus Christ was passing by. And then he began to shout. He knew how to call Jesus. He knew how to approach him. He said, Jesus, thou son of David. Why? Well, because that name, thou son of David, is a covenant name that Jesus Christ you know, inherited from David. God had established a covenant of mercy with David. And so when you call Jesus Christ, thou son of David, you are asking for the mercy of God. Amen. So Bartimaeus came and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And as he was shouting at the top of his voice, people said, no, 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 stop. He was not, not going to listen to you. They were discouraging him. The more they tried to stop him from shouting, the higher the volume of his voice was rising. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, the son of David. The Bible says, call upon that name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it. And is safe. The name of the Lord is your tower. The name of your, the Lord is your bunker. The name of the Lord is your hiding place. The name of the, of the Lord is sufficient for your provision. The name of the Lord Jesus is sufficient for your healing. And so, Jesus Christ called him. The Bible says he, Jesus Christ stood still and attended to him. He said, bring him here. And when they brought him to Jesus, he said, what would you do that I do for you? For you? He said, that I may see. And the very moment he said, see, and his eyes opened. Mm -hmm. And everybody that had been discouraging him before, he said, wait a minute. Jesus Christ fixed it? He said, yes. He fixed it? Yes. He's a fixer. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, he will fix the problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, he will fix the trouble. Amen. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, he will fix your home. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, he will fix your body. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, he will fix everything that needs to be fixed. And this morning, our eyes are on him. He will fix us. He will fix our nation. He will fix our families. He will fix our finances. He will fix everything that has to do with us. And his name alone will be glorified. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to quickly pray right now. Whatever thing is happening to you, whatever thing you are trusting God for this morning, fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Just put that problem aside and just worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. When I see the hair on your head, Amen. When I see the fire in your eyes, yes, when I see your feet like a brass, yes. when I see the power, when I hear the power in your voice, mm -hmm. I fall at your feet yes. to worship you. Lord. There has to be a scene of Jesus. Yes. When, when, when we, have, we want the problem to be fixed, you have to look at where Jesus Christ is Amen. and fix your eyes on him. Amen. When I see the stars, the seven stars in your hand, when I see the double-edged sword that proceeded out of your mouth, when I see the beauty of the countenance of your face, when I see the shining, the shining of the sword in the fullness of his strength, I fall, I fall this morning, I fall. And when I fall at your feet, everything that's supposed not to be in my body, they are falling. Every sickness is falling. Cancer is falling. Oh yes, pain in the leg, fall in the name of Jesus. Trouble, fall, sorrow, depart. Oh luck, get away in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be your name. Oh Lord, your word has gone forth out this morning. It is not returning to you for it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.